Hi there, and welcome back to Mastering the Young Band. Uh, in today's episode, I'm gonna give you some strategies for key signature with your young band musicians, and also a concept to help um, your students, your beginning students, to learn how to hold their notes full value. So first, key signature. The most important thing I think for young band musicians is to teach them the note that changes between key signatures. There's always one note that changes between the keys, and I call that the critical note. So for instance, in the key of B flat, the seventh scale degree is the critical note. In the key of F, it's also the seventh scale degree, the concert F sharp, or I'm sorry, the concert E is the critical note. In the key of E flat, it's the fourth scale degree. In the key of A flat, it's the fourth scale degree. So what we do in our music, I have my students, we put our finger on the key signature, and then at the beginning, I teach them. I go, okay, flutes, double reeds, low brass percussion. What's in your key signature? Two flats, great, two flats. They're B flat and what? E flat. All right, now, there's a note that is sometimes flat, sometimes not in different key signatures. What note is that? And we talk about it and they figure out that it's A. So what I tell them is, when you have two flats in your key signature, your critical note is A. And then I have them get their pencil and they draw naturals in front of their A's in their music. In uh, my second year bands, I have them put it in front of every A in the song, as long as it doesn't change key signatures. Then I talk to trumpets, clarinets, bass clarinet, tenor sax, all your B-flat instruments. And I go, do you notice that in some songs you play B and in some songs you play B-flat? They go, yeah. So your critical note when you have nothing in the key signature is B. And so trumpets, clarinets, all of them will put naturals in front of their Bs. For horns, this one's a little tricky, but I usually teach them that their critical note is E for the key of contra B flat. So they put naturals in front of their E. Alto saxes, berry sax, E flat instruments, it's F sharp. Because we talk about some songs you play F sharp, some songs you play F. So they put sharps in front of their Fs. Then when we go to another song, put your finger on the key signature. If we're in the key of E flat, I'll go, okay, stand up if you have three flats in your key. Okay, people standing, what's in your key? B flat, E flat, and A flat. What's gonna be the most missed note, the critical note in your key signature? We talk about that, it's A flat. It's B flat for the B flat instruments. F natural for the E flat instruments. And then for um, the uh, E flat instruments, excuse me, it's F natural. And same thing, we write in accidentals. So every key, of the primary four, so F, B flat, E flat, A flat, we talk about these critical notes and we mark them. Now just a note, in the key of F, we talk about primary and secondary critical notes. So let's think about the alto saxophone. They're gonna have two sharps in their key. The critical note is C sharp. That's the one that's gonna be the most missed in that key signature. The secondary critical note is F sharp. That's the other one that's easy to miss. Um, and so I actually have them mark both we put sharps in front of our C's and our F's. This concept of the critical note, I never stop talking about. So even in my, my top band, every class period, when we get a new piece of music out, first thing, everybody, put your finger on the key, find your critical notes, show your neighbor the fingering to the critical note. Okay, here we go. And then we play. It's our job as teachers to make that a habit. You can't blame the kids if they miss the critical note and you didn't point it out. You just have to always, okay, new piece of music, what's the first thing we do? Key signature, look at it, find your critical notes and make that mental shift. Um, it's just so important. If your kids are always missing their key signature, you have to ask yourself, am I being consistent about reinforcing that? Almost up until the day of the concert, I'm going, okay, key signature, critical note, here we go, and boom, and we're off. Try that critical note concept. Teach your kids that note of change. And it just really helps them to take key signature and just really boil it down, kind of brass tacks, what changes between the keys. The next concept is for your beginners, but it's another thing that I reinforce with my um, second and third year players as well. And that concept is having them hold their notes full value. It, it can be pretty confusing to students when you go, you didn't hold your whole note full value. You only gave your half note two beats. Your dotted half note, you only gave two beats instead of three. So what I do with my students early on in their rhythm charts, I teach them the concept of touching the rest. So for instance, now this isn't my rhythm chart that I use, but in this measure right here, you'll see that they have a quarter, quarter, quarter rest and quarter. So when we're counting this in a rhythm chart, we would go one, two, three, four, one, two, touch, four. 
And when we would die, we still say touch. Da, 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 touch. Da, touch. I, we touch the rest. We carry our sound to touch the rest. It's a really concrete way of getting your students to understand how to carry those notes through. Their sound touches the rest. And what's great is all you have to say when a kid doesn't hold their whole note for four full beats, you just look at them and go, hey, you didn't touch the rest. And right away they go, oh, they know what that means. Sometimes when you look at a middle school kid and go, you didn't give your whole note enough beats. You ended your whole note early. You didn't give it four full counts. Sometimes that doesn't click. Sometimes in even class, when I say touch, when they don't hold it long enough, so they're like doing a whole note and they go, da, touch. And I look at them and they go, yep, I didn't touch the rest. So in our book work, we do that as well. So when we, again, I was showing you this dreidel. So we would go, da, 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 touch. Da, 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 touch. It just really helps them to understand how long that note goes internally and to touch the rest. You're gonna know you've done this well when you have whole notes at the end of songs and the kids go, da, 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 touch. And what's fun, you always get those excited kids, they love going, da, touch. <laughs> they make a bit of a game of it. I use this touch concept with all levels of my band and it's just, it's such an easy way of explaining release. Did you touch the rest? Did you carry your sound all the way through with that touch? Try that tip with your rhythm charts, with your book, any music that you have. And it's just a real quick way of getting kids to understand that their sound needs to carry through and touch that rest. Thanks a lot, everyone.